Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Episode 3 of The Mitten on Knitting. There's 169 days left till I'm back, so let's see what I've been up to. Between taxes and a major project at work and a town board meeting this week, it's been really, really crazy. But it did give me the chance to remember to take the time to spin a little bit and knit a little bit because that's what kept me sane and going throughout the week. So I would encourage you that if things are getting really stressful in your life and you have a thousand things going on, take five minutes out, just five minutes out of your day and relax and calm and and do what makes you happy because otherwise you're just going to lose it and and that's not going to help anybody. But um, So that's what helped me a lot this week. And I also did get a chance to um, look through patterns to see what I want to do about my scarf. Um, I went through a couple thousand patterns on Ravelry just to find what elements really make me happy, make my heart sing when I'm looking at a scarf. So I'm narrowing that down and uh, hopefully by the end of this week I will be swatching. Fitting for the mitten this week, um, the weather is starting to get spring-like, which means that there's about a 40 degree difference between where I live and where I work. So layers, layers, layers. Um, I'm still wearing um, my hand-knit socks. I've dropped the heavier ones made out of the German wools, and I'm wearing the lighter ones made out of the hand-spun um, American wools, I guess, uh, that I got at Rhinebeck, and those are still so super comfy, and they're keeping my feet nice and warm and nice and cool um, simultaneously. And <clears throat> instead of wearing the Jared Flood scarf as a scarf, I'm still using it as a pillow, of course. I've broken out my line break, um, which is a nice little asymmetrical triangle made out of some lovely Noro silk, um, which I love. It's in blues and browns, and it's just a happy little spring scarf. So spring is here, and that means 40-degree uh, differences in the weather, or 80. Um, what am I knitting? I am I am knitting those socks. Those socks, those never-ending socks. Um, I I got past the heels, as I mentioned, uh, heels five and six, and uh, I'm still knitting them. And that's okay. Um, socks do take me a long time. I think part of it is because the next thing I want to knit as a responsible adult knitter is the Rhinebeck scarf, but the next thing I want to knit as a little two-year-old knitter is either a sweater for Rhinebeck or mittens, because uh, I haven't knit a pair of mittens in a couple of months, and, uh, you know, I like knitting mittens. All right, uh, so that's what I'm knitting. Um, what's sitting this week? Well, the same thing as last week. I still have... That pair of socks and those two skeins of merino uh, that need to be given their spa bath. Of course, now that I've heard about the size of the scarf that I'm going to be making for Rhinebeck is half of what I thought it would be. Uh, I think if I get those two skeins washed up and spawed that it will be just enough yarn for me to make the scarf and have some left over. So um, they're still sitting there. They're still waiting for their spa day. But now that I have a plan, I'm feeling more enthusiastic about actually uh, washing them up and setting them out to dry. Plus, we're supposed to have a really dry week this week. Um, no rain to the end of the week. So 
hopefully I'll get that done um, sometime tomorrow. Yay! Um, what's on my wheel? Well, I've still got the merino um, for the Rhinebeck scarf, which I may not need because it doesn't have to be as big of a scarf as I thought it, it would, but I think I'll still go ahead and finish up those last two ounces anyway. And then, of course, the um, Hipster's Gerber Daisy um, spin, which is really, really just kind of sitting there and making me happy. And then the um, the sock yarn gradient. This is the thinnest I've ever spun, and I finished the first the yarn for the first sock. I did uh, dark to light five four three two one one two three four five. So I'm going to andy and ply the single off, and then to ply it together um, in, from the bracelet, you know, the inside using the inside and the outside so the darks will go together and hopefully uh, down the gradient uh, the rest will come out fairly equally. I, I don't think I made it exact, but, you know, I think that'll be part of the charm, maybe, perhaps. Well, either way, it's it's going to be a nice pair of socks when I finish with it, I hope, if there's enough. Or there'll be ankle socks. Or just footies. We'll see. What's sitting? Um, nothing new sitting in the um, finished object basket, but I did finally manage to get those two skeins of merino washed up and the pair of uh, springtime tulip socks are washed up as well, and they're hanging out to dry. Uh, I washed the merino, let it soak, and um, pounded it just a little bit to make it a little full. And uh, I have it hanging with a weight on it. And then the um, socks, uh, you know, they came out. They came out nice. Once again, they they kind of muddied because of the stitch pattern I used on them. Um, I did the Gainsy stitch on them, and I don't think that was really a terrific pattern to highlight the color of the yarns, but um, it does make me happy, and I guess that's what really counts. So, those are all hanging in the bathroom drying. I just gotta wait a couple more days. Uh, of course, it's gonna rain today, so there probably won't make much progress in the drying front, but I hope before the end of the week I'll have a new pair of socks in my sock rotation. In stash up down, um, there was no stash down, um, but I did manage to pop into a local yarn store down in the city um, after I finished work Saturday morning, uh, and uh, I picked up a pair of uh, a set of uh, clover uh, locking stitch markers because I had lost. Uh, some of my stitch markers on the train, which was uh, very disappointing. I, I make most of my stitch markers because, you know, I have beads, it's fun, and uh, I like stitch markers. And, you know, I'll pick up some real pretty ones here and there. But the locking ones, um, I don't make them. So I like the clover ones. They're durable, and uh, they're really very handy, especially um, for my Magic Loop uh, socks, two at a time, sock knitting. Uh, so when I lost them, naturally I had to pick them up. And uh, as for fiber, I did have a conversation about getting some fiber um, from one of the vendors that was going to be at uh, Claremont, but I didn't pick it up. So if it's not in the house, I'm not going to count it in the stash yet. Um, so you get to hear all about that when it actually is delivered. And now a word not from a sponsor. The Homestead Hobbyist, making hand-dyed fiber for your spinning pleasure. Visit the Homestead Hobbyist on Etsy.com to see the latest in his Savage Blend line. And don't forget to stop by and see him in person at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, May 7th through 8th at the Howard County Fairgrounds in Maryland. Homestead Hobbyist. Your source for fluffy balls. Of roving, that is. In road trip.
this week um, where I will not be. Uh, I will not be at the uh, Southern Adirondacks Fiber Festival. Uh, I checked out the festival. I have the weekend free at this point, and it is only two hours from my house, um, so I have the potential to go, but I'm not going to go. It should be a great festival, and I've heard uh, some really awesome things from a lot of folks about it, but that will be the next festival that I am not going to. Um, Of course, you know, with the whole not going Claremont thing, when I had to work late uh, Friday night in Claremont's on Saturday, so my plan was um, that I would I'll work Friday, Um, They put me up in a hotel in the city. I get up Saturday morning. I go to the local yarn store right across the street from the hotel. Thank you very much. And then um, I take the train up, hop in the truck, head on over to Claremont. And then there was uh, another store, yarn store, having their uh, yearly blowout sale, um, 60% off pretty much everything in the store. Um, So I was going to sneak in my own personal fiber festival of a day. Unfortunately, instead of ending work around, you know, 10 o'clock midnight Friday night, we didn't end until 6 o'clock Saturday morning. So um, I went and crashed in the hotel for a couple hours, ran across the street to the yarn store to pick up stitch markers. I couldn't even... My eyes wouldn't even focus on the yarn. It was just like a blur of color. But my goodness, there were a lot of people in that shop um, on first Saturday morning. The, the woman must have had like a dozen people in the shop, which is yay for her. Uh, most most people I've ever seen in a yarn store of that size at one time. Um, so anyway, I picked up the stitch markers, and then I fell asleep on the train, and I got into the truck <laughs> when I got up upstate, and, uh, yeah, I just knew there was no way I was going to be able to drive for an hour, uh, to get over to Claremont or anything else, so I went home, and I went to sleep, and I woke up on Sunday, which I think was a really much better plan for me personally, although it was sad for my yarn, but to make up for it, I did spend a lot of time spinning Sunday, so I hope that counts. For grabby paws, uh, things I want but I'm not going to get. I've just been looking at tons and tons of roving. Every time somebody mentions it on the Ravelry boards, the next thing I know I'm clicking over to Etsy shops and uh, just taking a great look to see uh, what's up for sale, what the colors are, um, the fibers. Uh, Fortunately, I was sort of pretty much kind of all right I bought a little bit um but it hasn't arrived so it's not part of the stash yet but I've been pretty good about it because I don't want to blow my entire fiber budget before I get to Rhinebeck um because then I wouldn't have any money to buy a fleece at Rhinebeck even though I have five fleeces here but we'll just ignore that so Anywho, um, so it's fiber, fiber, fiber. That's what I've been looking at this week. And hopefully my credit card will stay firmly in my wallet and not on my fingertips as I type it in to the computer. Um, So grabby paws, uh, looking for fiber. On dough this week... uh, The big dough is the socks. I knit through the heels and I was trying to convince myself how happy and pleased I was with them. But they were about two or three rows off. And I wasn't happy and pleased with them. And they they were pulling a little bit too tight and they weren't sitting exactly, precisely, correctly on my feet. And I was going to let it go. And then I was thinking about it. Um, You know, the purpose of making your own socks is so they fit perfectly on you. You know, that's that's the whole custom, handmade clothes experience. If it doesn't fit perfectly, what the hidey hey ho is the point of it? Um, 
So I ripped them out pretty much down to the toe increases and started over again. So hopefully by the end of <laughs> next week I'll be on heel 7 and 8. And that's my big toe moment. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep redoing them until they're perfectly fitting on my foot. Um, and I don't know what my big brain lock is that I'm not getting them to fit properly, but it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to call it, fun. Where I'll be? Um, I've got no plans to go anywhere or do anything except go to work, come home, and go to work and come home and go to work and come... Well, you get the point. Anyway, uh, but no fibery plans to do anything. I do have uh, stuff to do for town, um, and... So that's going to take up a little bit of my knitting and spinning time. But other than that, hopefully I can just have a quiet and peaceful week, which is really all I want after last week's insanity. So there you have it. Questions for the mitten this week. Um, I did get a question in, and I think it was anonymous, Kath, who wanted to know, if a fingerless mitt has a collar for the thumb, is it still considered a fingerless mitt? And are thumbs fingers, or are fingers thumbs? So the answer, anonymous, is that all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. And if you put a collar on your thumb, for fingerless mitts. They're still considered fingerless mitts because they don't have the top of the finger. And you can, again, do them two at a time on the needles in magic loop from fingertips to cuff or cuff to finger, um, whichever you prefer. But you can go ahead and have a, have a collar on the thumb and still consider it uh, fingerless mitts. That's quite all right. It's it's okay. You can do that. I give you permission. Go ahead. Make it happen. Send me a picture. Okay. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>